code. All right. Welcome. Uh, I'm formerly known as Anne, but currently known as Morticia Adams. And I'm Poseidon. Formerly known as Brian. And welcome to a very spooky edition of our Friday yoga. So today we're going to start actually in Shavasana. So feel free to come down to seated on your mat, whichever way is most comfortable. And bring yourself to all, <laughs> knock over some charms, disturb a black cat or two. And then uh, bring yourself to just resting position. Palms face up about a foot or so away from each hip. Legs uh, coming straight down from the hip bones. Feet are just opening out to the side naturally. And just rest here on the ground, <laughs> on the ground, in the ground, in the grave, in what is translated from Sanskrit to English as corpse posture. Starting off spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and then from here, just start to focus on your breathing. The thing that connects us to life, the thread that winds its way all the way through our life, continuing through the entire experience till the very end. First thing that we experience, last thing we experience is our breath. So you can bring your hands to rest on your belly right now. And as we inhale, feel the belly expand away from the floor. As you exhale, feel the belly contract back down towards the spine, towards the floor. Inhaling deeply. Exhale completely. Breathing deep. As upsetting as it may be, we are going to take ourselves out of this position. So when you're ready, take your arms straight up from your shoulders and let the wrists be loose and half of the dead bug here. Legs are still down by the sides. Although we can bend the legs at the knees, drawing the soles of the feet to the ground. And then from here, as if we're rising up from the grave, Let's just inhale our way up and find ourselves in a comfortable seat. So feel free to sit on a blanket if you like, something to elevate the hips just a little bit above the knees. And we'll just inhale again here. And exhale, and let's kind of deconstruct our breath a little bit. So as we inhale, inhale first from the bottom of the pelvic floor. So as you inhale, the pelvic floor really expands, then the belly comes out, then the ribs, then the upper chest. So it's a four part inhale, inhaling through the pelvic floor, belly, ribs, upper chest, exhale from the upper chest, ribs, belly comes back to the spine, pelvic floor comes back up. Inhale, pelvic floor drops, belly comes out, ribs expand, upper chest expands. Exhale, upper chest comes back down, ribs come back in, belly comes back towards the spine, pelvic floor rises gently back to its resting position. So we'll just do a couple more of those four part breaths. Inhaling deeply. Feeling the life in your body. Exhale completely. When you're ready, we're going to gather up some of the energy around us. So on your next inhale, let's inhale the arms out wide and up. Exhale, push down with the arms. 
Again, inhaling the arms out, widen up. Exhale, pushing down with the arms. And then one last time, we're gonna inhale, widen up. Exhale, draw the palms together in front of the chest. And we're actually gonna start the class not with the sound of om as we traditionally do, but with the sound of hum, H-U-M, which is the sound of a black hole. It's the sound of the universe contracting. If om is the sound of the universe expanding, the creative sound, hum is everything coming back in. So when you're ready, we'll inhale deeply. Um, possibly feeling that sound within the body. So today's practice, we're going to start on the ground, warm up a bit, get up, warm up a lot more, and then enter into meditation, doing an ancient Tibetan practice, well, an interpretation, Western interpretation of an ancient Tibetan, Tibetan practice called Chod, which is used as a means of dissipating fear. So let's start off with some neck stuff. Would you mind teaching us some neck things? Sure. So sitting up nice and tall and having nice, relaxed shoulders, you might even shrug your shoulders down, let's inhale them forward and up and then just roll them back and down. And then we want to leave that length of neck while we start doing things for the neck so that we get that maximum benefit. So on the next exhale, we're going to exhale the chin down to the chest. Slowly exhaling, moving the chin towards the chest. And then we'll slowly inhale as we start to roll the right ear over towards the right shoulder. So we'll get an opening on the left side of the neck. And then when we exhale, we'll take the chin back down to center. And the next inhale, we roll the, uh, the left ear towards the left shoulder. And then exhale back down to center. So we're just gonna inhale to one side, exhale back to center. Inhale to the other side. So just getting that stretch on the neck, letting the back of the neck be nice and loose and long. Shoulders keep relaxing down. And then the next time we inhale the right ear over towards the right shoulder, let's just hang out there for a few breaths. If you want, you can take the right hand and bring it to the top of the head and just gently rest it there, not pulling the head, not pulling on the neck, just giving a little extra um, resistance here for a, a nice stretch, a nice opening on the left side. If you want even more of a stretch, you can take your left hand and walk it away from the body. You can also reach it in different positions, like up, down, sideways, diagonal, and you can experiment with turning your hand in different ways as well to see if that gives you any more of a stretch but you don't have to get too involved with it. Just find something that get, lets you get that nice stretch on the left side of the neck. Breathe into it for a few breaths. And then we're gonna leave the head where it is. We'll bring the hands back down to the earth. We'll take a deep inhale into the left side of the neck. And on an exhale, we'll take the chin down to the chest. And then the next inhale, the left ear comes over the left shoulder. And we'll just hang out here for a while, letting the neck open on the right side. If you want, you can take the left hand and bring it to the upper, to the top of the head and just give it a little extra resistance there. If you want, you can take and walk that right arm away from you. And then again, you can experiment with different positions for the arm to be in, different positions for the hand to be in, and just breathe into that opening all down the right side of the neck. And then leaving the hand, leaving the head where it is, we'll take the hands down, we'll take a deep inhale into the left side, right side of the neck. Exhale, chin comes back down the chest. And then we're gonna inhale the head right back up to neutral. 
And then from here, we're going to go a little further with the next step because we really want everything to be flowing in the body today, particularly in preparation for meditation, but especially this area along my neck. So since we've already done half neck rolls, if you feel safe doing so, you can exhale the chin down to the chest, inhale the right ear towards the right shoulder, and the chin follows coming all the way up for a full neck roll, exhaling the left ear towards the left shoulder, chin comes back down to the chest. Inhaling the right ear towards the right shoulder, looking up, keeping the back of the neck long, exhaling the left ear towards the left shoulder, chin comes down to the chest. So we'll just do a few more neck rolls like that, inhaling the chin up, keeping the back of the neck long, exhaling the chin down, inhaling and exhaling. Take your time here, go slow. If anything feels stiff or creaky, just take your time, be gentle, examine what that feeling is like. If you feel safe, you can go a little deeper into that place, maybe taking the chin up and down when you find those points of constriction. But just be gentle and listen to your body. If there's any sharp shooting pain, just keep the chin rolls to half, like a half moon like what you were doing before. If it's really intense, Otherwise, you can continue with these full neck rolls. And then next time your chin comes down to the chest, we'll switch directions going the other way. So inhaling to the left and up, exhaling to the right and down. Inhaling to the left and up, exhaling to the right and down. Definitely remembering to keep the back of the neck long as you inhale and look up. Exhaling, letting the chin come back down. We'll do a few more of these. Really exploring your range of motion here. And then when you're ready, chin comes all the way down to the chest. We'll bring the head back up to neutral so the chin is floating parallel to the ground below you. And we're just going to bring the right ear towards the right shoulder and then the left ear towards the left shoulder, back and forth, just gently and slowly, back and forth, as if there is a scarecrow blowing back and forth in the wind on top of your head. Side to side. From here, as you pendulum your head side to side, you can start bringing the chin down towards the chest while doing this, getting a stretch on the back of the neck for the upper trapezius muscles. That's what connects the neck to the shoulders. And then you can lift your chin just slightly, still doing the same thing, but make sure to keep the back of the neck fairly long here. We don't want to crunch back, so then we'll look straight up. And then we'll bring our chin back to neutral again, and we're gonna do a, uh, uh, how would I describe it? Like a massage for the brain? Is that what the Hellraiser is called? We affectionately call this next movement, the Hellraiser. We learned it from our teacher, Teo Semko, as part of his Charna series. So we don't teach this one very often. Look twice to the right, look twice to the left. Look twice up and to the right. Look twice up and to the left. And then look twice straight up. So again, twice to the right, twice to the left. Up and to the right twice, up and to the left twice, straight up twice. So five movements, ideally done slightly rapidly, but again, be aware of your neck. If this is something that, you know, you could get whiplash from or something like that, just be very gentle on yourself. Take this at the pace which you are most comfortable. So we'll do a few more, twice to the right, twice to the left, twice up and to the right, twice up and to the left, twice straight up. Take it at your own pace. The idea of this movement is as I move my head fairly quickly, my brain, which is mostly liquid, is sloshing around in my skull knocking around 
on different parts of the inside of my skull, stimulating the brain, stimulating the skull. And if you really want to stimulate the brain, you can turn the eyeballs straight up and towards each other as if you're looking out a hole at the crown of the head as you do this. Breathing is natural. If you want to time it with your breath, I like inhaling twice at the last one. I look straight up, so be. And then when you're ready, we'll take our hands to our neck and just start milking and massaging the neck, massaging the shoulders, massaging the upper trapezius. That's that strong muscle that goes from the ears all the way down to the shoulders. You can take the pads of your fingers and press them in right below and behind the ears and just gently massage little circles back here along the back of the neck on either side of the cervical spine and then down to the shoulder blades. When you get to the shoulder blades, you can make your hands like lobster claws and just sort of grab and pinch, or you can make your hands like C's and grab between the fingers and the heel of the hand, either way. And we'll work our way down at this point to our arms. You want to teach the arms? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe at this point, let's take our legs out and shake them off for a second, just because we're still seated and we're going to be seated a little bit more. So feel free to put the legs out in front of you and just turn the feet back and forth. If you can bring your hands behind you and support the body that way. Okay. Bounce on the knees a little bit. Shake the radiator, as the case may be. And then let's put both feet flat on the ground, knees up towards the ceiling, and just let the knees rock back and forth. From a flat girl again. Not that Morticia Evans would ever find herself on the back of a truck mud flat, but we can pretend. And then from here, let's come back to a comfortable seat. If you remember which leg was crossed in the front, you can switch that. And now, sorry to interrupt you there. Now we can do some stuff to warm up the arms. So tucking the thumbs into the palms, we're going to curl the four fingers around, <clears throat> sit up nice and tall, relax shoulders all the way down, take your arms out long, and start to rotate the wrists with the arms reaching long. So we're getting a full rotation at the wrist here. Now we're going to start to take the arms up overhead. Try to keep your shoulders relaxing down, the chest still opening, the heart opening. When you get to the top, just take the arms down along the front of the body, continuing that rotation of the wrists. When you get to the bottom, switch the direction you're making those rotations. And then we're going to take them up through the front and down along the side, arms reaching long. When you get to the bottom, you can open up your hands and just kind of flap them out, shake them out. Let him relax a little bit. And then we're going to um, get some movement into the elbows. So this time we'll reach the arms straight out into a T. We're gonna tuck the thumbs in, curl the four fingers around, relax the shoulders. And as if your forearms are a couple of airplane propellers facing straight forward from you, we're just gonna rotate them. You might hear some popping, hear some popping or clicking in your elbows or even your shoulders. It's totally okay as long as it's not hurting in any way. Switch the direction that you're making your circles. Listen to that clicking, popping. The bones. Now we're going to take these um, uh, airplane propeller arms are making, face them straight up towards the sky, relaxing shoulders down. And again, Circling a few times in one direction, just breathe deep and then switch the direction that you're rolling them. And then before we finish off, we're going to do the face the airplane propellers at the ground. So elbows out to the side, shoulders down, and like you're stirring two big cauldrons on either side of the body, we'll take it 
we'll um, go a few times in one direction and then switch the direction again. Arms should be feeling pretty alive and awake by now. So let's open up the hands and flap out the arms. Very feel, feel free to get very vigorous with your arm flapping and wagging. Just really letting it release out. And then we're gonna get some. Let's just do the T and I'll do the later on. Oh, okay. So we're gonna hit each other. <laughs> we're gonna, there you go. We're gonna take the we're gonna do one more thing for the arms. We'll take the arms out into a T, palms face down, relax shoulders down the back. And we're just gonna start reach long and make little circles, making tiny little circles with the arms. If you feel like taking them out to wider and wider circles. Go right ahead, and then we're going to switch the direction, but start with a small circle, reach long, and then if you feel like it, you can start to open it out to larger circles here. And then before we finish, we're going to take those palms face up, relax shoulders down, and again, reach long, making tiny circles with the arms. Feel free to let those spiral out to larger and larger circles. And one last thing. Switch the direction, start small, reach long, relax shoulders, and then spiral it out to larger circles if you feel like it. And then just go ahead and relax and release the arms one more time and really just give them a very vigorous shake. Can you take this with your hands and knees from here? Yeah, so um, from here, Let's come onto hands and knees into a tabletop position. We'll get ready to do some cat and cows. And feel free to pad on your knees with a folded up blanket if you're practicing on the wood floor or similar hard surface. So I have knees directly under hips, uh, wrists under shoulders. We're going to do some cat and cows. We're going to take some deep breaths and move through these motions as we do so. So inhaling, raise the tailbone, drop the belly, raise the head. Exhale, drop the tailbone, round the spine, drop the head. So we're going to keep going that way, inhaling into cow, exhaling into cat. If you want to have fun with it, try to make the motion start at the tailbone and work its way up the spine and finally out the crown of the head is the last thing to move. And then we can start to get a circular motion into the spine. So start to um, rotate into your cat and cows. So you can um, start to round the ribs as you come into the cow and round to the other side as you come into cat. So it's like your torso is inside of a barrel and you're trying to rub the rub your torso against all the all sides, the whole entire inside of the barrel. And then we'll switch the direction that you're drawing that circle. You can just let the head kind of relax and go along with the spine. Mm. And then we'll slowly start to make our way, you can just make your way back to center. So we can open up the shoulders here if you'd like. Um, we'll do some threading the needles. So spread the fingers uh, really wide on the left hand. So we're gonna ground into that left hand. We're gonna take the right hand out, reach up to the right, turn to the right, reaching up towards the sky. And then on an exhale, we're gonna thread the needle. So we're gonna take that right arm underneath of the left arm. We'll come down to the right shoulder, keeping the right ear if it's comfortable for you. Again, if you have blocks or props or anything you like to have here, feel free to use those to help make this posture work for you, make it comfortable in any way that you need to. And maybe this is as far as you're going today. If you want a little extra, you can take the left hand, put it on top of the right hand, interlace the fingers and try straightening that top arm. Ooh. 
And if you want even more of a twist, you can inhale that left arm up to the sky and then exhale it down to the sacrum. Check in with the sacrum, make sure it's not popping off to the left side or the right side, but facing that the hips are facing straight towards the earth. And then if you want, you can wind that left hand around. Maybe you find the outer upper right thigh. No matter where you are in this posture, just breathe deep. Then we're going to inhale the arm up to the sky. And with the left arm, exhale it down next to your face. We're going to press into that left arm to come back up. Turn to the right, reach the right arm up towards the sky. Exhale down. Do the same thing on the other side. So this time, just spread the fingers really wide on the right hand. And we'll take the left hand and turn to the left, reach up towards the sky. And then on an exhale, we'll thread the needle. We'll take that left arm underneath the right arm. We'll take the left shoulder to the earth. Left ear comes to the earth. And if this is where you are today, that's totally fine. If you want a little extra, you can take that right hand, put it on top of the left hand, interlace the fingers, and try straightening the, uh, the top arm. If you want even more, you can inhale that right arm up to the sky. Exhale it down to the sacrum. Check in with that sacrum. Make sure the hips are pointing at the earth and not left or right. Then you can wind that hand around and maybe find, find the outer upper left thigh with the right hand. And just breathe into the twist. No matter where you're, no matter where you got off, no matter where your what bus stop you got off on on this posture. Then to come out of it, we'll inhale the right arm up towards the sky. Exhale it down next to your shoulder. Press in, coming up. Turn to the left, reach that left arm up to the sky one more time. Exhale, coming back down into tabletop. So from here, if you want, you can come down to elbows. We'll do a couple of options here. You can come down to the elbows here and you can turn the crown of the head towards the mat. So coming into a, um, a rabbit posture. And if you um, want a little extra stretch and you feel very safe with your rotator cuffs and you don't have any injuries there, you can sort of slide the hands forward a little bit and come down to your forehead or even the chin if your upper back feels flexible enough. The idea of this posture is that the hips are still stacked directly over the knees. You're just breathing into whatever version of this posture that you decided to do. And then we'll slowly start to walk the hands back, coming back to tabletop. All right, and then from here in our tabletop, let's bring ourselves to standing through downward facing dog. So feel free to push into the hands, tuck the toes and lift the hips up, taking them back towards the back of the mat. You can pedal one heel down and then the other going back and forth, stretching through the hamstrings, the back of the legs, possibly stretching through the front of the legs as you do this too. And then we will gently walk our feet towards our hands, bending the knees if needed, and just roll all the way up to standing as if we are a zombie with no spine. And then once we're standing, let's just shake it off. So we're gonna wake ourselves up a little bit, get some movement into the body in a more kind of official way. So feel free to bounce with me. I wanna bounce with you all night. Sunlight. I only know the chorus for that, so that's all you get. 
But if you're feeling really kind of down and frustrated and annoyed and just, you know, can't get off the ground today, feel free to jump in place just a little bit here. Just gentle jumping in place. Arms are flopping around side to side, really bringing the energy up and uh, rising from the ground as the case may be. And when you feel like you've had enough of this jumping up and down, just give a little bit more. And then we'll jump the feet wide, ground the feet, and just shake down. Shake everything down as if you're slopping off whatever gunk you don't need, shaking out the cobwebs of your internal body as best as possible. And as we do this, feel free to allow this shaking to evolve into twisting, going back and forth, hands knocking against the shoulder as you go side to side. Maybe the back of the hands are gently knocking against the back. Breathing deep. And then we'll let the feet come completely grounded. Let the bouncing stop. And we'll just continue twisting side to side like this. Back and forth. Let's bring the elbows up to chest height, bending the arms at the elbows. We're gonna inhale to the right, exhale to the left. So inhaling. Feel free to make this noise as you exhale. Like you're whipping energy up in your body. You can even take your hands like you're manually grabbing the air and flinging it from the right to the left. So grab to the right, fling to the left. And the arms can come up into goalpost arms. Inhale, right, exhaling left. If you wish to grab hunks of air and fling them to the left. Grabbing from the right, flinging to the left, and continuing the same kind of breathing pattern. And then arms can come down by your side as if you are manually turning a hula hoop again, maybe grabbing air on the right, flinging it to the left, inhaling to the right, exhaling to the left, possibly making sound on the exhale. And you can let the arms flat side to side, returning to where we came from. Let's bounce a little bit more as we unwind our twist and then just find ourselves bouncing in place as we are doing. So feel free to bounce and bounce and bounce. We can't get enough of this stuff today. We're trying to revive them old bones. Feel free to let the arm kind of waggle from the shoulder. That means palms turning forward and back really quickly, elbows loose. You can do this with the other arm too. See how it feels. And then maybe do it with both. And then let's do this kind of fun shoulder seesaw thing where we reach down with one hand and then reach down with the other, just going back and forth, reaching down, reaching down. Now the idea is that I'm reaching down and reaching down. I'm not hiking up and hiking up, but the shoulders will come up some, that's fine. We're just going back and forth with an emphasis on reaching down. And then I want to get some length into the side body and really start breathing into the side body. So feel free to come back to stillness. Arms can come out into a T. Feet are a little wider than hips width distance. I'm going to inhale and curve to the side like I'm holding a giant pumpkin. Exhale, arms come out into that T again. Inhale to the other side. 
and exhale. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. And continue like this, taking it at your own pace. Feel free to go slower or faster. And just like that scarecrow swaying in the wind. And then arms can come down by your sides. We'll shake it all off just a little more. And let's let the feet come about mats with distance. So maybe about a little over a half meter or about two feet apart. Hands can come to the hips and we're just gonna roll through the hips. So we're lubricating the hip joints here, doing some hip rolls. If you prefer to have your hands down by your sides for this, that's fine. Otherwise you can just rest them on the hips. <clears throat> Don't forget to breathe as you do this. Maybe inhaling the hips forward, exhaling hips back, or vice versa. Or just breathe at your own pace. And then when you're ready, we'll switch the direction, going the other way, lubricating those hips because we still do have our dons and detox ahead of us. So we really do want to have the hips fairly well warmed up for this. And then you can bring the feet slightly closer together and it's your choice whether you want to lead from the hips here. We're doing figure eight. So bringing one hip forward and back. Oh, and then the other hips forward. So I'm going to bring it back. And then this hip comes back. Very simple movement. I could just go like this. But there's a sway to the side as I do this. If it's easier for you to come into this from your arms, we're just back stroking the arms. And then you can let the arms lead the movement of the hips here. So as I backstroke the arms, the hips are figure eighting. Maybe I'm getting a little bit dizzy. Feel free to take a slightly wider stance if that's the case. And take a look at something that's not moving, like a point on the ground, if you start to get dizzy here. And if it still doesn't help, just shake it on off and that will ground you. So the other way, my hip leads forward. So I'm bringing my glute forward and then the other glute forward. One glute comes forward and then the other back and forth like this. And then of course, if it's easier for you, you can come in from a front stroke. What do they call this? Is this rest stroke? Mm, the crawl. I just caught swimming. The crawl of death, the crawl from the grave. So feel free to swim yourself out of that grave that we started off with in Shavasana. Mm, breathing deep. And shaking it all off. This last one will be fun to show from the side because my costume is so tight. It's almost, almost hard to breathe deeply. So tail comes out, tail comes in. Feet are about hips width distance here, so eight to ten inches apart. And we're just taking the hips back and forth. Hands can come to the hips for this. But the idea is it's a tail out, tail in kind of movement. You can inhale the tail out, exhale the tail in. Inhaling. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. If you want to make this from the abdomen, the abdomen lengthens and then contracts, lengthens and contracts. So you could do it that way too. And then the next thing is we'll keep this movement going back and forth, this rocking of the hips. Let's bring a circular movement into it. So there we go. <laughs> this is a great costume for this movement because I'm leaving nothing to the imagination except maybe what's happening around my wrists, but nothing too exciting is happening there right now anyway. So hips come forward around to the side and back around to the side and forward. When you're ready, we'll switch directions, doing these little hip rolls the other way. Even though we did hip rolls earlier, this is another deeper spot. We're getting into another place in the hips. And then from here, we'll shake it all off again. Hands come to the knees, feet come together. So the big toes of my feet are touching, but there's actually about three inches or so between my heels. 
I'm placing my hands on my knees here, which are hugged together. I know it's hard to tell because I'm all black. And I'm gonna just draw little circles with my knees. So lubricating the knees a little bit here. All right. And then when you're ready, we'll go the other way. Mm. Mm, stand up, shake it all off. Find yourself a piece of a wall. Place one hand on it. We'll bend one knee, drawing the foot towards the hip. You can use a strap here if you want. You hook the strap around the ankle and then draw the foot towards the hip with the strap. And so when our foot is near our hip, Let's tuck the tail and draw the knees towards each other. So we're getting a nice long stretch through the front of the bent leg quadriceps, so the thigh of the leg that's bent basically. And then from here, we can let go of the foot or the strap and just draw little circles with that bent knee. So we're slowly drawing little circles and then you can start to spiral them out to bigger really exploring the space around you. And then we'll just shake that leg a little off to the side and swing it back and forth. Just swinging the leg loosely from the hip. And then when you're ready, we'll switch directions. You want to teach this side while I turn off the heater since I'm behind it. Yeah, <laughs> so you. we're going to take now the left foot and bend it, or bend the left knee and bring the left foot towards um, our butt, grabbing the left foot with the hand. Try tucking the tailbone, try uh, bringing the knees together. Breathe deep into that stretch on the left thigh. And then after a few breaths, we're going to release the foot, keep the bend in the knee, and just start to make circles from the hip and then you can feel free to widen it to a wider circle if you like. And then switch the direction. Explore space, opening up that hip and then go ahead and shake it out. And you can just sort of swing Sorry. the leg. Try not to kick anything or anyone if you're practicing with a friend. Yeah, and swing from the socket. Ah! Oh, look at Sorry. And then shake it out. And shake everything out because, again, we can't get a whole lot of shaking going on here. So just feel free to keep shaking. Oh, we got left ankles, which we can do. Uh, let's do ankles real quick. So this is a little bit of a test of balance. You can put the hands on the hips, just bend one knee, lift one foot. I'll show from the side so you can see my foot. And I'm just drawing little circles on the ground with my toes, loosening up the ankle. Breathing deep. <laughs> and then when you're ready, switching the direction, going the other way. Gathering a moment of calm before the storm. <laughs> so we'll shake off that foot. Same thing with the other one. Little circles. First going in one direction. Really, we're drawing circles with the toe here. Which one? I only have one. And then when you're ready, we'll switch directions going the other way. and then shaking that foot off. So let's see, we've done neck, arms, legs, torso. Mm -hmm. Torso, disembodied torso. So we've done a little bit of torso stuff, but not all of it. So let's bring our feet fairly wide here, bend the knees, draw the hands to the knees, palm face down, fingers pointing in. I'll show from the side, I've got a nice long spine here. I'm not sticking the tail up, but keeping the spine long. I'll inhale here in the center, Exhale, twist to one side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist to the other side. So just continue at your pace.
And then the next time you inhale to center, hold here. Let's make the feet so that they are parallel to each other, pointing in the same direction. Bending the knees again. I'm going to interlace the fingers with both hands, taking my arms down between my legs. I'm going to inhale the arms up high above my head, even sitting back in my hips a little, exhaling. Ha! Chopping dead bodies. Inhaling up, <sighs> exhaling. Ha! Not chopping dead bodies, chopping wood for your winter time fire. Inhaling, exhaling. Ha! Ha! Chopping zombies. Ha! 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 Next time you fold forward, just stay forward. Loose and floppy like a wrangle. And then at this point, let's take the heels of our palms right to the spot where our hips bend here. So I'm going to bend the knees. I'm going to inhale the spine long. And then I'm going to exhale, folding forward. Ha! Now as I inhale, I'm pushing down on my hands. So my shoulders might be coming up a little by my ears. It's totally fine. Exhaling. Ha! Inhaling up. Exhaling, ha. one more time. Inhaling up, exhaling. Ha. And from here, let's take our hands down one leg, down the other leg, down one arm, down the other arm, cutting any cords we don't need. Bouncing our way back up to standing. And last but not least, let's open our hearts. So find the area where the ribs split. It's the xiphoid process. It's the top of the solar plexus. So for me, it's a fair distance above my navel. For some folks, it might be right above the navel. But for all of us, it is above the navel. So take the pads of the fingers and gently press into this area, pushing in here, massaging little circles. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling completely. And then when you're ready, we'll switch direction. Inhaling deeply. Exhale completely. I want to do just a couple sun salutations, maybe even just one to further warm up the body. And then we'll do our strength building practices and also build heat within the body. These are useful for the winter time. And then we'll bring it back down to seated for a little bit of lung capacity expansion, also useful for the winter time. And then as long well, last, the practice of chod. So, oh yeah, we got loads of time. This is great. So feel free to bring yourself to the top of a mat. I'll teach one, you teach the second if you want. Or whatever, you right? And uh, we're gonna do Shivananda style some salutations. So toes, big toes can be together. And there's maybe again, like let's see, I'll pull up my train here. There's maybe like three inches between my heels. I'm not sure if you can tell there or not. I'm gonna inhale the arms up wide above my head. Exhale, palms come right down to heart center. Then from here, I'll turn my palms down and inhale the arms up above the head. Exhale, folding forward. From here, I'm gonna plant my hands on either side of my feet. Inhale the right leg all the way back to the back of the mat in a nice long lunge. Hold my breath, bringing myself into plank here with a nice straight body. And then exhale, knees, chest, and chin. As you exhale here, feel free to stick your tongue out and make the sound ha, like that. So when we're all the way down, on your next inhale, let's peel up for cobra, hips are down, heart is open. Exhale, bend the knees, tuck the toes, lift the hips, coming all the way back to the downward facing dog, maybe pedaling the heels for just a second, maybe catching your breath here. Bringing the shoulders down the back towards the tailbone. So technically the shoulders are going up towards the ceiling. And then I'm gonna inhale my right leg up and bring it all the way in between my hands. What am I doing? 
and then bring the knee down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the knee comes down. Inhale the arms up, very professional here. Exhale, fold forward. Draw that left foot forward to the front of the mat. On your exhale, next inhale, arms come wide and up, slight back bend. Exhale, arms come down by the sides. That's half of one. I'll teach the other half and then toss the ball to you. So inhale, arms up above the head. Exhale, palms come together down in front of the chest. Inhale, palms point down, arms come up. Maybe a slight back bend. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, left leg back, come all the way down to the knee. Arms come up. Exhale, hands come back down to frame that right foot. Right foot steps back, holding the breath for a second. On your next exhale, knees down, chest and chin through the mouth. <sighs> Inhaling, coming up into Cobra. Heart shining up, hips down. Exhale, tuck the toes, bend the knees, lift the hips, coming back to your downward facing dog. Breathe here for a second, catch your breath, inhaling deeply, exhaling completely. And then we'll draw that left leg up, inhaling the left foot in between the hands, right knee comes down as we continue our inhale, arms come up over the head. Exhale, hands come down, right foot comes forward to meet the left forward fold. On your next inhale, arms come wide and up, slight back bend. Exhale, palms just come right down by your sides. That was one. <laughs> do we need another? I don't know, do you want another? I think that's it. I think we did it. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right, well, as if we weren't warm enough, let's build up a little bit more warmth. We're gonna just do five dons. Five bay tops. And we'll start with Dand today since we've been doing all these sun salutations. Dand is a Hindu wrestler uh, push up, basically. And in my opinion, it's best done kind of slowly, mindfully, with control. So it's a breath time movement. We're going to come down to the mat. You can bend your knees, bring your hands right in front of you for tabletop. And then we're going to tuck the toes and lift up into downward facing dog. So what that looks like is I inhale forward, keeping my shoulders down to come to upward facing dog. So my toes are still tucked here. My knees are above the ground. My hips are above the ground. My heart is open. And then I lift through the hips and exhale back into downward facing dog. Again, keeping my shoulders down. That's the hard part for this. Gently keep the shoulders coming down the back. So let's do five of those when you're ready. It's inhaling the upward facing dog, exhaling the downward facing dog. So when you're ready, we'll take a breath to prepare ourselves, inhaling deeply, exhaling completely, and then begin. Three more. Last one, make it count. And then from here, feel free to walk the toes gently forward. You can bend the knees if you need to, or walking the feet all the way up to the hands. Folding forward here, let's grab for opposite elbows and just rock side to side like Ragdoll. Wasn't there a Halloween Ragdoll, Jack Skellington's partner? Yeah. Jack Skellington's uh, friend, mm -hmm. Ragdoll. Sally! Maybe. Sally, yes, yeah, so let's do a Sally for a minute. Shaking side to side. And then let's interlace the fingers behind the back and the small of the back here. So arms are up by our sides. And then as we forward fold, let's lift the arms away from the back, drawing us deeper into our forward fold here. Leaning forward on the feet. 
Leaning back from the feet, finding your center of gravity. And then arms can come down the back of the legs and we'll just slowly roll all the way back up to standing. When you get here, turn the palms face out. So bring the shoulders down the back and then let's shake it all off again, because it's great. And then let's just swing the arms back and forth, getting some bear hugs side to side, loosening up through those shoulders that have done their last little stretch of work in this surprisingly challenging Halloween class. What is Halloween but a time to make you feel alive? So from here, do you feel like teaching Bay Talk? You want me to teach Bay Talk? Um, Bay Talk squats. So I'll show from the side. It's gonna be about hips width distance and you want both of your feet pointing in the same direction. Um, if you need to measure off fist width, it's about uh, hips width, it's about two fists. Fist width. And we're gonna we're gonna squat down, and when we squat down, we want the knees to go forward, so we don't want the knees popping out to the side or knocking in towards each other, but tracking straight over the the feet. There's two versions. You can go come down just a little bit. Here, I'll show the the little version. I personally find is a, a little easier with the feet slightly wider than the hips this sense. So that's the the half big top, which I'll show you real quick. When you're taking our arms like we're rowing. A boat. Now, full bay top. Um, definitely want to keep your feet at about hips width distance. And we'll come all the way down far enough that the, the heels come up. So that kind of looks like this. <laughs> so we're going to do how many of those? We're doing five. And just if you're deciding to do full bay top where your heels come up, find something to look at that's not moving. Otherwise, you'll find yourself wobbling around like a top off of its axis. So, da, 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 da. when you're ready, we'll begin. Inhale, squatting down. Exhale, coming up. And just for the sake of Halloween, let's do two more and make it seven. Hello. It's got a lot brighter in here all of a sudden. I think the world likes our, uh, our big house. So feel free to just shake it all off now. You've done your Hindi wrestler squats and push ups. You've done your charna. You've done your sun salutations. You've done so much. You've been scurrying around, getting ready for the winter, gathering all your nuts, which means that we can Frankenstein the way down to the ground. So <laughs> for this. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to groan in a guttural sense as you do this, like Frankenstein. I'm gonna again, it's almost like I'm doing the big talk again, although this time I want my feet to be toes touching. Again, maybe like three inches of distance between my heels there, even though the big toes are right next to each other. So really it's the outside of my feet, they're parallel to each other. From here, I'm gonna find a point that's not moving. Fix my eyes on it. Bring the arms out in front of me like I'm about to attack someone. And then come up onto my toes. This balance might be hard enough as it is, but from here, if you can and you want to, bend the knees, try to keep the knees together using the hips as a counterbalance for the legs. We're gonna come all the way down to a toe stand. At this point, you can roll back onto your, onto your uh, booty if you like and put your hands down. Use that as your brace. Or if you're still up here and you're comfortable, hands can come into prayer. Knees open wide. Interlace the fingers all except for the pointer finger. Point it forward, drawing yourself low, 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 low to the ground, parallel to the ground. And then take the hands apart and cuff the heels. So here we are just right above the ground, balancing. Then hands come down, we'll bring ourselves back to seated. And let's put the hands behind us, legs in front of us again. Rock the legs side to side. Back and forth. At this point, 
Let's roll all the way down to our backs. Again, rocking side to side. You can take your hands on top of your knees here. Take your right hand and just draw little circles with the right knee. Right hand is helping the right knee move. And then draw them the other way. And then we'll do the same thing with the left knee, drawing little circles in one direction with the left knee. And then when you're ready, draw them the other way. And then keeping the knees together, let's draw circles with both knees now. So really massaging the low back here. First going in one direction, and then going in the other direction. And then soles of the feet can come right down to the ground. We're going to cross the right ankle over the left knee. Take that right knee away from you as much as possible. And then lift the left knee, interlacing my fingers of both hands behind the left knee. We'll bend the left knee over those fingers and draw that left knee towards our chest for a reclined pigeon. Feeling a real deep stretch on the back of the right thigh. If you want to go a little deeper, you can take that right hand out, but continue using the left hand to draw that left knee towards you. And you can put that right hand on the inside of your right knee and push the right knee away from you, away from the ground. So the right shin is parallel to the ground, parallel to your chest. And then when you're ready, you can bring the sole of the left foot back to the ground. Arms can come out into a T and we'll do a really interesting uh, spinal twist called pinwheel. <laughs> where we let the left leg fall out towards the left. So the sole of the right foot is aiming for the ground here. Left knee is laying maybe on the ground here. And then once you get fully open like this, so the sole of my right foot is inches away from the ground, I'm gonna open my right knee away from my body. So my right knee is going out here. I'm opening up the hips this way. I'm going to look over my right shoulder for just a second. Feeling a long stretch through the right side of my body here. Then when you're ready, both knees can come back up. Soles of the feet back on the ground. Let the knees rock side to side. And at this point, let's cross the left ankle over the right knee. We'll draw the right knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers of both hands behind the right knee as we do so for a reclined pigeon here. And if this is your comfortable space, by all means, stay here. If you want to go a little deeper, you can continue drawing that right knee towards the chest with just your right hand. We'll take our left hand up and put the left hand on the inside of the left knee pushing the left knee away from the ground to keep the left shin parallel to our chest, parallel to the ground. Feeling a nice deep stretch on the back of the left thigh. And then when you're ready, we'll bring the sole of the right foot to the ground and we'll do pinwheel on the other side. So arms come out into a T again. This time, the right knee falls open towards the right foot, towards the ground, towards the right. And the sole of the left foot is just floating inches above the ground here. At this point, I'm going to open up the left knee away from myself. So my legs are almost stacked on top of each other in the fire log. And at this point, I'm going to look over to the left. Breathing deep and feeling a long stretch through the left side of my body. The obliques on the left side, left abdominal muscles, and some stretch through the spine. Keeping the body nice and loose and flexible and limber. Nothing hard, nothing stoic just playful and soft.
And then when you're ready, we'll bring both knees back up to point at the ceiling. And again, let the knees rock side to side here. We'll grab one happy baby posture and then yogi's choice. So feel free to bring the knees up towards the chest. Soles of the feet are standing on the ceiling and we'll wrap the hands around the outside of the feet. Mm, the most dignified of all yoga poses is happy baby, because what is more dignified than laying on your back with your legs open like this? Or also what is more dignified than a happy baby, of course. So feel free to rock this side to side. You can straighten one leg as you go to one side and straighten the other as you go to the other side. Okay, and that last bit of stretch for the inner thighs, for the hips for the hamstring, sorry. <laughs> and then we'll come back to center. Let's draw the soles of the feet together, keeping the hands on the outside of the feet. Let's slide them down now to the outside of the ankles and draw the ankles towards you as you draw the knees away from you for reclined bound angle posture. And at this point, you can close the knees back up. And it's yogi's choice now. You can either come right into Shavasana, or if you want, you can roll off to one side, push into your hands, and come up to seated for a short meditation based upon the uh, very old, about 1,000-year-old Tibetan practice of Chod. Chod comes from Bang tradition. That's pre-Buddhist tradition. Um, but it's something that's popular in Tibetan Buddhist tradition. The way that I was taught Chod was very simple and in more of a Hindu tradition. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, I'm an American, so this is an American teaching Chod. So take from that what you will. So if you are in meditation, just close your eyes, inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Begin to feel the stillness within the body. You know, this is a practice that was traditionally done in graveyards to help the practitioner abolish a sense of fear. So, traditionally, in some traditions. The practitioner would tie themselves to a post or a tree in front of a desiccated dead body that was left out for vultures to pick apart. Very pleasant. And the practitioner would spend the night with that body envisioning the creatures that came to greedily feast upon the dead flesh as also feasting upon their flesh and tearing their body limb from limb until there was nothing left. And then the next morning, the practitioner survives, ideally, and finds that they have overcome their fear of death. It's a very, very, very simple explanation for a very complicated, very diverse, old practice. But what we will do as we sit here and breathe, is take the right hand out and imagine that you have an incredible sword in your right hand. Eyes can be open here if you need to see what I'm doing. Grabbing the hilt of the sword, whether it's a sword of metal or a sword of other material, it's a sword of business crystal or diamond or quartz crystal, or even just a sword of light, like a lightsaber from Star Wars. We're gonna inhale deeply and as we exhale, you can breathe naturally as I tell you what's happening. As we exhale, we're going to slice off the top of our head right at eyebrow level. So inhaling deeply, exhale, slice, look straight up. You don't have the top of the head anymore. You can take your hand to the top of the head and take the hand down in front of you. You can look at that hand in front of you and envision that you're holding the top of your head. You've sliced off your thoughts, you've sliced off the mental chatter, 
and you are here in emptiness, absorbed in peace, endless. For you have ended samskara, the mental fluctuations. As you breathe, you bleed from the top of your head, blood spurting out of you like a fountain. And of course, hungry ghosts and creatures and entities gather around you, thrilled for the opportunity to feast upon your blood. As they come closer, you find that that skull top in your hand is growing and growing and growing and becoming like a large cauldron with a fire underneath of it, heating it up as it catches the blood that spills from your head into this cauldron. Making an incredible soup. At this point, we take our thumb of our left hand to the ring and pinky finger of the left hand and bring the pointer and middle finger of the left hand together. This is our second sword. When we take this sword and we slice, we start slicing our body. If you want to use the pointer and the middle finger of the left hand like some kind of plucking instrument, you can take that middle finger over the pointer finger and use it to pluck off bits of flesh and throw them into this cauldron in front of you. So just slicing and plucking and desiccating your body. Actually, that means drying out. So dissecting your body. <laughs> Breathing deep. The hungry beasts around you and the spirits and the ghosts are slavering now. They're so hungry because they see this incredible cauldron just filled with bits of human flesh that's fresh and new. Your brain is cooking in there. Everything is cooking in there. And eventually you slice off so much of your body that there is nothing left. There's only the cauldron bubbling and spurting blood. And the hungry beasts are slavering at the cauldron, licking it up along the sides, going crazy, just having an incredible time drinking your essence, everything from you. Until so there's nothing left of you and their bellies are full and they're satisfied. They're happy with what you've offered them and they will leave you in peace. So here you sit as nothingness devoured by beasts, nothing is left but the empty cauldron of your skull. And you are void. But like any void, you look at it deep enough and you may see points of light, like stars in the night sky, the Milky Way stretching across the center. Those points of light appear to be coalescing. They're working their way together and forming a shape which looks distinctly like your body. They coalesce around you, filling you in and cleaning you out as you reform into a million points of light. And like all bodies, some of us, we have cobwebs internally. Those points of light just burn them out. Perhaps a mantra is chanted in the background. Om Shai Mahamaya Devi Haim 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 Hum Pat Saha Om Shai Mahamaya Devi Haim 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 Hum Pat Saha Om Shai Mahamaya Devi Haim 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 Hum Pat Saha And as this new light being has fed your fear and your flesh to the spirits, 
He returned as just light. You can find your way seated into Shavasana and rest in your new body. Finishing up where we started, hands about a foot away from each hip or a third of a meter, legs about a meter apart or three feet. Letting the breath become natural, softening the edges of the eyes, softening the eyebrow center, softening the edges of your mind. as if you are laying on a laboratory table that has been elevated high up to the roof and beyond of a castle laboratory. Lightning strikes and your fingers begin to move just a little bit. You raise your arms right up ahead of you, over your shoulders, and then all the way back over your head, taking a nice long stretch into your reanimated flesh, drawing the legs together, stretching back and forth. Mm. You can either roll off to one side and push yourself up to see it, or feel free to come up a la Frankenstein. Drawing yourself all the way up, grunting with life. <laughs> and we'll bring ourselves back to a comfortable seat. Like Frankenstein brought alive by lightning, we will chant the sound cream, H-R-I-M, is a sound of light that pierces out through the body, cleanses the body, and prepares us for the darker days coming as we prepare for the winter solstice. So if you want to join me, we're just going to chant it. Feel free to come in at any time, leave at any time. It's just the word cream, H-R-I-M. Cream, 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 cream. Hain, 
Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> 